Dogecoin is amazing. I know many of y'all love it. You got a great community, funny memes, and massive gains too. I mean, what else can you ask for? Recently, I came across a new project that could be the next Doge. Well, let's be real here. Nothing can replace the original. But this project is heavily inspired by Doge and has some important differences too. Its name is Hoge Finance. It's like Doge, but with an H. They launched in early 2021 and have already grown to a market cap of over $200 million. I came across it when I saw some people buzzing about it on crypto Twitter. That's when I dove in to do some more research because I'm like, hmm, if Hoge has the power of the meme behind it, then it can potentially have the same massive gains as Doge. So in this video, I want to share with you what I found out about Hoge Finance and share my personal verdict so you can make your own decision of whether or not you want to buy some. Sound good? Well, strap in my friend because it's time for the deep dive. Welcome back to BFB, I'm your host Kevin, and in this channel, we're all about that deep research and honest opinions to help you get that long-term edge in the crypto space. While you're watching, if you like what you see, I greatly appreciate a quick like because that one quick click would help me out immensely. All right, so what is Hoge in a nutshell? Here's how I'd put it. It's like a DeFi project got married with Doge and they had a baby called Hoge. Hoge Finance is focused on DeFi, but they also place heavy emphasis on their meme culture. Because if not for the memes, then why are we even here? Their token is Hoge, and it's an ERC-20 token that launched in February of 2021. The biggest, most important feature about Hoge is that it's deflationary rather than Doge, which is inflationary. Remember, a big criticism of Doge is that there's no limit to the amount that can exist. Its supply is forever increasing. That's why some people don't like Doge. Miners constantly earn a ton of new Doge, and then they turn around and dump their coins on the market. That's additional selling pressure that keeps the price down. Not good for us holders. Hoge, on the other hand, is trying to avoid that problem by having a fixed 2% tax on every Hoge transaction. Part of that tax is permanently burned, which reduces the overall supply, and the other part is distributed automatically to Hoge holders. All done by smart contracts, hands-free, hassle-free, just the way I like it. The exact split of the 2% tax can be determined by this formula that you can find in their white paper. But what you need to know is this, Hoge's tokenomics encourages people to hold rather than to actively trade. That's why Hoge is for holding, you get it? Right now the project doesn't have that many features, but you gotta remember, they just launched a few months ago. Their plan is to first build some fun DeFi apps, like Hoge related NFTs, for the community to play around with and share. Now that we've got a better understanding of Hoge, let's take a closer look at their token details. Because honestly, that could make or break its potential for investment. Hoge started out with an initial supply of 1 trillion tokens, with half of that burned immediately upon launch. Kind of weird if you ask me, why not just start with 500 billion, right? But anyway, it's already down to 417 billion and decreasing every day. I went to their Etherscan page and saw that they currently have over 36,000 token holders, which is pretty impressive for a young project. This tells me that the word is spreading about them organically. Another important point that I discovered is that devs are using a liquidity locker so that they can't pull the rug out from under us and peace. Remember, in order to trade Hoge on decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, they need to first create a pool by depositing two tokens. In our case, that's Hoge and ETH. Usually it's the devs who first create that pool because they're in charge of the project. When they deposit both Hoge and ETH, they get in return Uniswap LP token. And at any time in the future, they can redeem Hoge or ETH if they send those LP tokens back to the pool. So that's super dangerous, right? Because it could look like there's a healthy market for us to trade, but if they send their LP tokens back and redeem, it could leave us with a barren wasteland of a trading market and wreck the price too. So by using liquidity lockers, they want to build trust by restricting their ability to touch those tokens for some time. Now, quick warning here. I haven't personally audited these liquidity lockers, so we have to take them at their word that it'll work properly. Hoge has seen some wild price action so far, rocketing from 0.00001 dollars, that's five zeros if you're counting, to 0.00093 dollars. That's a 930x rocket ship for ya. But after the peak, it's dropped down around 80% so far, and is still currently chilling around those levels. The big question now is, will it drop down further, 
past this current consolidation range, or is it set up for next leg up sooner rather than later? This price action is what I'll be keeping my eyes on in the coming days and weeks. Now, another promising DeFi project to keep our eyes on is Fusion Network, also our sponsors for this video. They've been building since 2017, focused on creating an interoperable blockchain world. They already have a cross-chain DEX Live called AnySwap and a decentralized banking app called Change that has over 1 million users on their pre-launch waitlist. Just FYI, their waitlist closes on March 31st, so go check them out ASAP if you're interested. All of these run on the Fusion Network, which is powered by their FSN token. They are really flying under the radar right now with less than an $80 million market cap, but it's already tradable on Bittrex, OKX, and Binance Dex, among other places. If you're curious, go check them out using my link below. All right, now that we have a better understanding of Hoge, we gotta ask, what are they up to in the future? What are they launching? What partnerships are they seeking? We gotta look into these to get a sense of their future potential, or else we'd just be buying into a stale project. One thing that's already had some progress is Hoge-themed NFTs. And you can check out the site hogemint.com for more info. They already minted some NFTs, but there are some issues with the smart contract, so it's currently under maintenance. They also want to let you pay for minting gas fees in the future with Hoge, which is cool because that's some more utility for their token. Here's what some of their Genesis NFTs looked like. Pretty slick if you ask me. Right on their website, they also have some Hoge-themed games that you can play straight from your browser. They're pretty simple, like those old school arcade games. I actually tried some out. Right now, none are integrated with Hoge directly, but in the future, they want to launch some dApps where you can play and earn Hoge. This goes with their goal of focusing on the fun applications of DeFi when working on their project. But it's not all fun and games. They're also focused on some more boring, but yet crucial initiatives. Recently, they got an initial security scan for their smart contracts by Certic. Their token got a pretty high score, 96 out of 100, but this number does fluctuate on Certic's site. They're also getting a complete manual audit, but that takes a few months. And yes, I know auditing is no fun, but this is an important step that comes before listing on major exchanges. Which, by the way, there's some buzz that they got a listing offer from a top exchange, and now they're looking to crowdfund the fee for that purpose. This is super important for the maturation of Hoge because exchange listings come with more exposure, liquidity, and legitimacy. They're also planning to register a legal entity in France for this project. This is to make them more legitimate and have a way to form official partnerships with other companies. I mean, yes, we all like to be decentralized, but it does make sense that they need a way to sign legal contracts so that they can work with the outside world. For example, they want to work with animal shelters and esports teams as their first focuses. Animals because of the dog and esports because they like the games and think that the token can fit nicely in that sphere. On the tech side, they're also considering expanding to other blockchains because Ethereum has high gas fees, which is making it really expensive for them to do everything they want. I'm not sure which blockchain networks they're considering, but this is definitely something to keep an eye on. And lastly, just like how Doge community has a culture of goodwill and giving back, Hoge also wants to capture that by building a decentralized crowdfunding platform. This lets token holders contribute to any cost they like. I really like this because it's not just HODL and moon missions, but they can actually do some real good for the world. So what is my final verdict and my plan? Would I buy it? Because I haven't yet. I was doing my research first. There are many things I like about Hoge Finance. It's beginner friendly, fun, and has some good traction in terms of community growth. It's a young project, but so far it seems like the team could be trusted not to screw us over. Of course, trust is earned over time, so we'll have to keep engaging them and evaluate their track record. Now, the deflationary tokenomics are quite interesting, and in theory, it should help lower selling pressure and increase the price long term. But I'm not as confident about this idea because just look at the bomb token. That was also a deflationary token, and now it's pretty much a zombie project. So just because it's deflationary doesn't mean that the price is guaranteed to go up in the future. That's an important point I gotta stress. It does depend on adoption too. But there's something else I gotta admit I'm struggling with here. Usually deflation is good for coins that want to be stores of value, like Bitcoin, right? It's great to save and hodl because the supply decreases. But then why is Hoge trying to add so many use cases like NFTs, micropayments, etc.? Why would we want to use our Hoge at all if we're going to face a tax and also lose our ability to grow our stash via redistribution? You see why I'm struggling with this mismatch of approach? Or am I crazy for thinking this and have got it all wrong? 
I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Now, don't get me wrong, I still want to buy some Hoge because I think it has the potential for face melting pumps. After all, we see Doge get massive pumps over and over again through sheer force of meme and community. In terms of buying Hoge, I'm glad I didn't smash that market buy when I first saw it because I was really tempted. That was a few weeks ago when it was already rocketing. Now it's dropped quite a bit, so it looks like I have a better entry point. Just looking at the charts, I'll probably split my purchase into two batches, one right now and one later. I'll be looking for accumulation in this zone before I buy my second batch. Or if it drops further down, then I can also use the remainder of my allocation then. I mean, look, I'm not a charting wizard, but I think this plan is best for me given the price action so far. Because we don't know if it'll drop further down or start a move to the upside instead. But even if it drops in the short term, I think Hoge can come back strong in cycles just like Doge does. What are your thoughts though? Are you a Hoge fan or not a fan and just going to stick with Doge instead? Either way, I'd love to hear a strategy and your recommendations for us down in the comments below. And while you're there, if you could give me a quick like, that'd be so helpful. I'm Kevin from BFB. I have some more juicy videos coming out for you this week. I cannot wait. Hope you have an amazing day and I'll catch you on the next one.